Acrylic pouring, also known as acrylic paint pouring, is a unique technique that may seem simple at first glance, but actually involves many secrets and potential pitfalls to achieve a spectacular result. So how do you do it properly? A complete beginner might approach it like this, similar to how I first attempted it by more or less copying what I had seen done online. However, I ran into numerous issues due to my inexperience and lack of proper guidance. In my initial attempt, I encountered several problems. First and foremost, the acrylic paint I was using was too thick, creating huge globs on the canvas surface and not flowing smoothly at all. In terms of the drying time, I wasn't even sure how long it would take. Plus, the end result was nothing particularly impressive or refined. Yes, honestly, the expectations versus reality meme really inspires me. So I did some research and educated myself because frankly after the first failed attempt I didn't want to waste any more materials like that. I even washed the canvas because I felt bad about using it so poorly but I finally figured out what it takes to create an acrylic pour worthy of the name. Hello frogs and toads and welcome to this fantastic new video. So speaking of materials, let's get to the good stuff. What do you need? First of all, water and, ac and acrylics. Acrylics. I have four kilograms of acrylics here in various colors, which I believe is 24 tubes if my math skills haven't completely abandoned me. In that package, there are some fluorescent colors as well as gold and silver. So what else do you need? Since acrylic paint on its own doesn't have a consistency that allows it to flow onto the canvas and spread out, as it's quite thick when it comes out of the tube, you need a medium that can be mixed with the acrylic in different ratios to make it more fluid, more liquid, while still maintaining the original pigment. Out of many possible options, I chose this one, Flutrol, which is actually an additive for house paint. It's meant to be added to the paint to allow it to dry more slowly, so you can apply coats without leaving brush marks. However, even though it's designed for a different purpose, it also works well for mixing with acrylic paint. Alternatively, instead of Flutrol, you can also use Liquitex or vinyl glue to thin out the acrylic paint. Some people take these materials and mix them together to get even more varied results, but mainly to save money. Essentially, these mediums allow you to use less acrylic paint, which is quite expensive, and replace it with something a bit cheaper. Although this one liter bottle costs 20 euros, so it's not exactly the most affordable option in the world. The second to last thing I got was silicone oil. This is typically used as a lubricant for hoses, gaskets and rubber parts. But here it serves a completely different purpose. In fact, it's used to create what are known as cells. If I'm not mistaken, silicone is supposed to be a repellent for acrylic paint. Correct me if I'm wrong. This can also be substituted with other things like dish soap or alcohol and using these alternatives will obviously yield different results. The last purchase of the day, and I promise this is it, is a blowtorch. Not a blowtorch as they say, just a kitchen torch, like the ones used for making creme brulee. I know, this is the most unusual and striking technique of all, but it works well together with silicone to get all the cells out of the acrylic. Obviously, if you replace the silicone with alcohol, I don't recommend using the flame on the painting. So this part is important. In fact, I strongly advise against it. It's not that I don't recommend it. I absolutely advise against it. You can find all the links to the materials below in the description. It's time to try my first pour as an informed person, but before that, I'll put on my apron and show you the proportions for mixing all the stuff I've shown you. From what I understand, there are various schools of thought online on how these different elements should be proportioned relative to each other. So there's no single correct proportion. But let's say you can also go with what you prefer, I think. What I did was mix by eye, and I emphasize by eye, one third of acrylic paint with two thirds of Floetrol. And then to the final mixture, I added about 20% water. Mix it very, very, very well, and at the end, add just two drops of silicone. Only two drops. Beep, beep. Ah! Three, and it's ruined. Oh well. In practice, the proportions can vary slightly, but what I seem to have understood is that the important thing is the consistency. It should create a thin, continuous stream when poured. If it creates a thin stream, that means the consistency is right. Let's review it. A thin stream. Et voila. These proportions, apart from some minor deviations due to measuring by eye, were maintained throughout all the pours I did in this video. And although they worked quite well, in my opinion, the best results were not seen immediately. So, for my first pour as an expert child, I use blue, gold, and white. <laughs> Oh 
Oh god, what a beautiful pattern it created. Right? The problem is, that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Obviously, my signature move is to do all these dangerous things strictly on top of a piece of scotch tape, like with the watermelon. See? Do you see these? These are the silicone cells. They appear thanks to the silicone repelling on the edges. But it only formed on the edges, see? What do you think about it? Me? I'm super excited. I'm about to do something I saw people doing on the internet. Oh my god. There's a 50% chance this whole thing goes up in flames. What is the use? See all these dots? The dots. You make them with the flame? I discovered this on the internet. <laughs> Trust me, I found out about it online. As expected, even though we've made some progress compared to before, I still don't think we're quite there yet. The great thing about this type of artwork made by pouring acrylic is that there are a wide variety of techniques you can apply to achieve different results. And in fact, right after the first attempt, I tried my hand at another interesting technique. Instead of pouring the colors onto the canvas like I did before, I experimented with the so-called, well, I don't know who calls it that, but anyway, it's the glass technique. where all the colors are first poured into a single glass, then the canvas is placed upside down on top of it, everything is flipped over again, and finally the glass is lifted. From above, it's stunning. A white circle with color around it. Oh! Oh! This is so cool. This is very cool. Look at the glass too. This is so awesome. Oh, that looks like Spider-Man. All the blue veins in the red look like him. <laughs> The enthusiasm was justified, right? Too bad this brown color came out. No, no, it's actually beautiful. Do you like it? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, with that little greenish blue shade, it is very nice. Oh my God, how cool. Oh God, I'm so excited. Look how beautiful it is here, here. These red and yellow veins on the blue. I'm not a fan of this brown side. I love it actually. I like this more. No, no, I love everything. That's it. I'm satisfied. I did well. Enough. It's done. And in this case, we're starting to see the first results of my studies. Although, looking at the painting as a whole, for my taste, it's still a little, I don't know, unrefined. It's a bit too chaotic, probably because I used a little too much silicone in the mixture. And so all these cells emerged, but I think they contributed to making the whole thing a bit confusing. Hey Frey, were you thirsty? Did you want to drink colors? No, I wanted to reuse the cups. Anything against that? Well, for the joy of the successful painting, you have to drink them. Sure. <laughs> yes, that's a great idea. The cup pouring technique from what I've seen online is one of the most beloved and practiced techniques. Precisely because it allows you to achieve truly incredible results without forgetting that there will always be an element of randomness that influences the outcome of these pours. With the same colors, you can achieve endless results. Some inevitably will be more satisfying than others, but I believe that with a bit of experience and practice, you can become skilled enough to minimize the risk of creating pores that you don't like. In my opinion, this is truly fascinating because if you think about it, no two pieces will ever be identical, as they often say, and it's especially true in this case. I made this pour with black, silver, and lime green, and for the first time, I feel like I've achieved a result that I'm really happy with. Then I also thought about not using the flame while wearing gloves. That might not be a good idea, right? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> no, look, it's actually a great idea. Now I'm going to try just three drops, literally three of silicone in each container and that's it. Because before there was a lot and I think now it needs less. So one, two, three, ah, uh, four. So here I'll put two, one, two, Hopla. and here I'll put one. Look, I see we have an audience. There's an audience because before no one had faith in me. The first time I did this, everyone was like, yeah, sure. Now everyone wants to watch, see? And said I had faith since from yesterday. From the very beginning, from the very beginning, even when it was still <laughs> terrible.
This silver is disappointing me. Let's see. Mm. Little by little. But once we achieve a satisfactory result with the glass technique, let's not get stuck on it. So it was time to try other techniques, other different things. I'm not sure what this particular technique I'm doing is called, but it involves arranging different colors on the sides and in the center. Then, using a piece of cardboard or another card, you take the color from the center and gradually drag it to the sides to create a gradient. This results in all the usual little cells that appear. I really like how this one turned out, but I think it would have been much more interesting to see it applied on a larger canvas because there would have been more space for the gradient to develop more gradually, allowing it to be appreciated even more. Whereas with this smaller size, I feel like some of that effect was lost. Now I have to confess, I need to make a huge me culpa at this point because I made a big mistake with Without realizing it. Up until now, as you've seen, I was using a piece of cardboard. I used canvas to make these casts since I had it in the studio. I thought, well, one thing is as good as another. Let's use this. It's also about the right size or so. But given the immense amount of paint on the canvas that later dripped down the sides, which eventually shrunk and dried, this caused all the glue holding the canvas to its place to peel off, and thus all these paintings ended up slightly warped, somewhat folded. In my opinion, they lost quite a lot of the initial charm. Honestly, I didn't anticipate there would be such issues. I would have otherwise avoided it. But let me tell you, if you have to choose between authentic canvases framed on wood and stapled and canvas cardboard, to exclude the latter because it really isn't good. <laughs> but since I've got these small, nice, tiny square canvases, it's time for another technique also extremely satisfying that of blowing. You can do it with simple straws to better direct the breath that comes out of our mouth. Or we can do it directly on the canvas, but with straws it's a little easier. Or if you have a very large painting to do, you can also do it with a hair dryer, because the hair dryer obviously makes that giant blow. And it's a very funny thing, I must say. It seemed a bit trivial initially as a technique, but then I had fun blowing on the surface. And since I also had a bit of orange and black left to not throw anything away, I added a little cobalt and made another painting. Guys, it doesn't look like cobalt, but on the tube it said cobalt. Sorry. And now the last decisive pour. I want to take the colors of my first pour and do it well. What's with this other cup in front that's in the way? Sorry, Rick, I don't know. <laughs> don't get mad. <laughs> don't get mad. Did you drop something? No! <laughs> no, this video's a failure. Yeah, let's just film this. Who cares about what you're doing here? Exactly. Wow. Then it's a habit? Anyway, it's time to take my two failures and turn them into two successes. So who knows what will happen? Are you ready to see two simultaneous pours? Who knows what will happen? We got it? I'll leave them for a moment to think about it. Mm -hmm. 
It's lunchtime. Are you ready? I'll do them at the same time. Can I see them? Of course. <laughs> no, these ones came out well. Do you like them? Yes, especially the one on the left. Oh yes, the one on the left came out better, but the one on the right is good too, after I let the flame die down a bit. You can see that you flamed it. Right, why? It's, it's twilight. Twilight-like in what sense? Like that? Yes, because it has all these jumbles. Instead, there aren't any in the other. The other one is more regular, right? Yes, in fact, this more one fluid? is smoother. Look, this piece here is the one that really sucks. Yeah, I know. Um, but I didn't really understand what happened here. In my opinion, there was a lump and... This one is very nice. This one is nice and even here there was a lump. So I said, let me flame it now. Instead, poof, it burnt in those spots. And it came out like crap. But I didn't even notice it there. So in my opinion, you see, they complement each other. Because a beam was created here that does this and then does. <laughs> Shall we hang them next to each other, these? But before that... Last finishing touch, right? Approved? Yes, first let's give them a spray of... No, do you like it? But stop it! <laughs> I like it. The first one is an eight. And the second one? The second one is six and six a half. Six and a half. <gasps> Fleek! Hey! In the end, I'll tell you this too. Once dry, the canvases unfortunately tend to become a bit opaque and above all, they are no longer completely smooth on the surface, but they acquire a bit of this texture of the canvas inevitably. This unfortunately makes them a little less interesting than the exact moment when they were just poured and there is still all the surface tension of the acrylic. It is a much, much more beautiful and fascinating thing. Just to show you the difference, this is an example of how a canvas behaves once dry. However, it's much more resistant, much more stable, it doesn't get damaged, and in fact this is much nicer to look at. However, to bring back to light a little of the old shine, it can be done in, in various ways. First of all, by using glossy fixatives or even using transparent resin, which we can pour over the dry canvas and let it dry. However, this is quite a special treatment and also a bit demanding and very expensive. Like two bottles to do this cost 50 euros. Because of that, I decided not to do it in this video. But if you're interested, I'll leave the link for you below in the description, along with all the other materials I used. Honestly, even without using a product to finish, the canvas still looks like a finished product. And even if the texture of the canvas comes out a lot, it's still a nice little object to look at and keep on display, unlike these other ones that, unfortunately, in my opinion, are now pretty much ruined because they're warped. Given that, I've really wanted to make this video for quite some time now. Personally, I'm a novice in the art of these acrylic castings. I wanted to share with you what I've learned in just under a dozen attempts. If you're interested in delving deeper into this art that I think is absolutely captivating and beautiful to practice, I'll leave you. I would say captivating. I've also placed the links to some channels from which I have learned the little things I've shown you in these videos and being artists that have practiced this thing for others have made numerous videos even very detailed on every single aspect that I've handled a bit synthetically in this video so if you're interested in delving deeper go down there you'll only do good no harm only good that said thank you so much for watching the video and you can say something Ricardo since you like to interject remember that every Friday at 5 we're live on the purple section. You can find us in the description of this video. I thank you. I bid you farewell. I send you a hug and an affectionate pet. Bye. And go to the newsstand. Oh, right. Go to the newsstand. Our comic book has been released. How much spam in the end, right? Uh, go to the newsstand. Rupert and the Hedgehog. The Adventures of Rupert and the Hedgehog. It's very nice.